What's this? Epinephrine? Has Dr. Romano been here? Hi, how are you? Hey, Dr. Romano, what are you doing out here? What I'd like to do is go over with you a very important mini lecture on adrenaline, also known as epinephrine. So come over and let's have a look at okay, some very Dr. important Romano. details that you're going to need for the exam. Now, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, first of all, are made by the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla. A sure bad exam question. Now, along with norepinephrine, we call these catecholamines because they are derived from a chemical called catechol. As you can see, it's nothing more than a 1,2-dihydroxy benzene derivative. Now, Epinephrine and norepinephrine are going to be made via a pathway. And I think this is important. No big details are needed, but we start with the amino acid tyrosine, which is then converted into what we call dopamine, then norepinephrine, and then epinephrine. I'll show you in a little while how norepinephrine is actually converted into epinephrine. Unequal amounts are stored and released. Now, about 80% is epinephrine and 20% is norepinephrine. With very few exceptions, they exert similar effects. So I'm not going to go into the fine details of the exceptions, but we can pretty much assume that whatever I say about epinephrine will be similar to that of norepinephrine. But keep in mind, one difference, though, is norepinephrine is the main neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system. That's always a test question. Now, as far as epinephrine goes, you should know four main things. One, it stimulates glycogen breakdown in the liver um, and skeletal muscle. So that means that it stimulates glycogenolysis, increases blood glucose, increases heart rate, and increases lipid breakdown called lipolysis. Now, a very, very tricky question is, is epinephrine a vasoconstrictor or a vasodilator? The answer is, it could be both. Now, let me illustrate. As far as vasoconstrictor goes, it will constrict renal blood vessels in the kidney. It would also constrict mucous membranes. And when you're a dentist, you're going to see that you would use epinephrine during periodontal surgery to control bleeding. Also, they would use epinephrine as a vasoconstrictor for glaucoma to decrease intraocular pressure. Also, it can also vaso can vasodilate um, vessels in the liver and skeletal muscle. Also, think acute asthma attack. So epinephrine can also be used as a vasodilator for asthma. Now, I want you to look at how we can convert norepinephrine into epinephrine. Now, here's the norepinephrine molecule. Now, this molecule here is called SAM. Now, SAM is what we call S-adenosylmethionine. It is a biological methylating agent. Now, what that means, it's simply going to donate a methyl group. And as you look at the arrow, there's the nucleophilic attack, moves out, and we do a simple SN2. So, this big molecule is simply a biological equivalent of a methyl halide, where the X can be this big group down here would just be the leaving group, which could be an iodine or something like that. So the bottom line is SAM simply donates a methyl group to give epinephrine. And as you can see, there's the conversion, a simple SN2 reaction, which has allowed me to go from norepinephrine into epinephrine. I hope this helps. If you understand these details, you are set for the DAT, the oath, and even the MCAT exam. The final details will be brought down in things like pharmacology and biochemistry. All right, good day to you. Thanks, Dr. Romano. I wish that guy would quit cutting his grass, but thanks for doing the video. Good right. day to you, sir. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.